is going on guys and welcome back to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle today I have an underused match in this one I actually built a pretty random team I wanted to test out Zapdos because Smogon has been doing some tier changes and I noticed that Zapdos dropped down from overused to underused so I figured why the hell not we'll see how he performs in the tier um the main things I am worried about on my opponent's team here is he has a Slurpuff which could belly drum and just be annoying he has a Kyurem, he has just, you know, a pretty, a pretty uh, threatening team that Chandelure could do some work to me. But, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get this started. So, I decided to lead off with Mega Aggron, just because I want to get Stealth Rocks up. Um, turns out he actually leads off with his Chandelure, so that kind of tells me he knew what I was going to lead with. Which is pretty damn annoying. So this is kind of not the best matchup here. I actually just decided to stay in and Mega Evolve. So my plan here was to expect him to maybe overpredict and go for something other than like a Fire Blast or a Flamethrower. Turns out he actually just goes for a Calm Mind, which is actually perfect because I end up just going for the Earthquake. Unfortunately, I decided not to get my Stealth Rocks up, which definitely would have helped me out early, or later on in the match. But uh, I go for the Earthquake. It does a lot of damage and it's going to actually knock that thing down to red. I kind of expected the kill. But uh, Mega Aggron not coming through for me there. But unfortunately now at this point he has, he's got the plus one special attack and special defense. So I know for a fact that a flamethrower is going to knock me out. So I decided to switch into my Typhlosion here. I actually did that switch thinking that I was uh, my Flash Fire Typhlosion. So it wouldn't have actually done any damage and given me a nice little boost. But it turns out I brought the wrong damn Typhlosion. <laughs> this is the one that has the ability Blaze. So that's kind of unfortunate. I now realize that uh, I do not have a hidden power that can actually even touch this thing. My uh, moveset on this Typhlosion is, I believe, Eruption, Fire Blast, Hidden Power, um, Grass, and then Focus Blast. So I had nothing to touch that thing. And right off the start, I'm down to uh, 5 to 6. So that's pretty unfortunate. Here I'm just going to go into Zapdos. I know that this fucking bird is absolutely bulky as hell. So I'll be able to take... Um, at least one flamethrower from this thing, as uh, I'm able to go for the Thunderbolts and take out the Chandelier. So, definitely an interesting start. A lot of the time you don't see people just starting to uh, set up Calm Minds right, right from the start. But, uh, kind of, you know, fucked me up a little bit. I lost my Typhlosion early, which would have been useful. But, uh, what are you going to do? So, Zapdos is at about half here, and I'm really not too worried about it. I'm just going to go ahead and switch out here. Zapdos, you kind of did your thing. Good job taking that flamethrower, my friends. As uh, he brings out a Sauce Buck. I'm going to go into um, Salamence because I would like to get an Intimidate off on this thing. Plus, I know that there's really nothing that can touch. And my early on plan was actually to start setting up with um, Salamence. So I'd be able to finish off the rest of his team. Honestly, I have Iron Tail for his fairies. I have fucking... I, I got Flamethrower for the... Uh, Fire Blast actually for the Fortress here. So I do go for the Dragon Dance. He switches into the Fortress. He's actually just going to set up a Toxic because he sees... Salamence is definitely a threat, especially an underused. Honestly, I don't know how this thing is underused, but I decided to use it because it's fucking powerful. But uh, he goes for a Toxic, like I said, and I'm just going to go ahead and go for a Fire Blast, which is not common on a Dragon Dance Salamence, but it is nice in situations like this. But uh, he's going to get knocked down to his Sturdy, and he is just going to go for a Volt Switch here, which is going to do a little bit of damage. He's going to save his Fortress for later, and um, I believe he decides to go into his Slurpa. Oh no, he goes back into Sa Sauce Buck here. This was kind of an interesting switch to me. I wasn't really entirely sure why he decided to switch back into his sauce buck here. Um, either way, I'm just going to go for a Dragon Claw at plus one. That is going to absolutely demolish that deer. So, sorry, buddy. Fucking deer just got nailed by uh, the headlights of my Salamence. <laughs> just froze right in the middle. Man, deer are fucking sketchy. I almost nailed the deer the other day in my car. It was it was not fun. But uh, anyways, now he's going to bring out his Mega Audino here. He is going to Mega Evolve on the first turn. And the Salamence is definitely prepared for fairies. After a Dragon Dance, I do have Iron Tail, which is able to do a lot of damage. I actually unfortunately missed there, which was terrible. Had I hit that, I think I actually had a chance to one-hit KO at plus one um, max attack Iron Tail from a Salamence. I think I ran the damage calc. I'm not entirely sure, but I think it would have killed. Overall, though, really unfortunate that I was uh, I missed that, so that kind of pissed me off. But uh, now I'm just going to go back into Mega Aggron. I know that he can't really touch me, and uh, I can scare things out with Iron Head. So... He goes into the fortress. I actually went for the Thunder Wave, actually, just in case he decided to switch into something else that wouldn't enjoy uh, Thunder Wave. But uh, turns out, freaking fortress comes out, and he obviously doesn't care about being paralyzed. I'm able to then outspeed him and finish him off with an earthquake. So, solid. So now he's going to switch in his Kyrim here, and honestly, I don't really know what this thing wants to throw at me. I know that Mega Aggron is going to be useful for me later on, considering he does have, like, a Slurpluff. Um, and that's uh, that freaking Audino and stuff. So I decided to switch into Jellison here as I want to see what this thing kind of wants to throw at me. He ends up going for a substitute and I'm like, you know, I don't see that quite often. So I'm, I'm kind of sitting here wondering what this thing has to throw at me. So 
Um, I believe he ends up just going for an Earth Power. I'm especially defensive, Jealous Synth, so obviously that's not going to do a damn thing to me, but I believe I actually end up misclicking here. I go for Scald, meant to click Shadow Ball. Also, he does get the special defense drop there, which is unfortunate because now his special attacks are obviously going to be able to do a lot more damage, and uh, I go for a stu- I, I, I misclick on Scald, and I was like, fuck my life, that's not even going to break the substitute, so... Now I have to let him attack me again and then finish off the substitute with a Shadow Ball. So, I mean, at least Jellison has so much fucking special defense that I really don't even care about this, uh, the drop there. So he goes for another Earth Power. Seems to be the only thing he has to hit me with, like, neutral damage. So I'm going to go for a Shadow Ball on the substitute, and uh, down goes the Bean Bag. So overall, not that bad. At this point, I'm, I'm sitting at about half HP. I have that special defense drop. I don't really know what I want to do to this thing. I would love to... Um, get a, like a status condition on this thing, although I just do not want to risk it going for a substitute again and then just, uh, you know, rinse and repeat. So, he's actually going to switch out. He wants to save his Kyrim for later and he goes into Sweetheart, which is the Mega Aldino. So, I actually end up switching myself here and I believe I go into, yeah, I go into Zapdos because uh, I was feeling maybe another Earth Power from that thing. Um, I am able to get Zapdos in safely, which is really nice because at this point, um, at this matchup, I know that I'll be able to win this. I have Toxic on my Zapdos, so I do go for the Toxic on the first turn. It actually ends up missing, and he's able to fire a Dazzling Gleam off at me. And uh, even though I am max uh, physical defense Zapdos, I'm able to take these special attacks. Really nice. Zapdos is just a bird that does not give a shit, let me tell you. So I end up going for the Roost here just because I want to make sure that Zapdos sticks around. And uh, I know that Mega Aldino doesn't really have a whole lot he can do to me. He is going to start setting up Calm Minds, but... I'm really, I'm on, at first I'm kind of not too worried because I know that I do have Toxic, but then, like, the instant I get the, a Toxic on this thing, I'm like, oh shit, this fucker's gonna have rest, and he's gonna be one of those lazy assholes that just gets rid of that, and just gonna have so much special attack and defense boost, I don't even know how I'm gonna take care of this thing. I mean, keep in mind, I do still have my Mega Aggron, but I think uh, upon running damage calcs, I realized that Iron Head does not actually even do, like, half to this thing, and I was like, oh, oh god, I might be in a shitty sp spot here, so... He goes for another Calm Mind, Zapdos after the Leftovers is going to be at about full health here, and uh, I believe he has two Calm Minds up, so his Dazzling Gleams are going to start taking their toll here pretty soon, but uh, I end up just firing off the Thunderbolts just because I want to see how much damage it's going to do with the special defense increase. Um, I, I got a little sense of false hope there, it was a critical hit, I was like, oh damn, that did fucking damage, but it was a crit, so yeah. Even with the, uh, the plus two special attack, though, his Dazzling Gleams are really not doing a whole lot to Zapdos, and I was kind of like... I was kind of like, wow, man, Zapdos is fucking awesome. I, I love this thing. It's probably one of my favorite legendary Pokemon, honestly. But uh, I go for another Thunderbolt now. He decides it's a good time to just doze off, take a nice little rest here, as he is going to be nice and healthy. Um, the good part for me, though, is that he has to rely on his uh, his Sleep Talk. So it basically just depends on what kinds of moves he uh, gets on his Sleep Talk. I decide now to switch, take advantage of the fact that this thing is asleep on the fucking battlefield. I get a free switch into Optimus Prime here. Fucking roll out, bitches. We about to transform on your ass. So I decided I bring out Aggron just because I wanted to start firing off some fucking some iron heads. He ends up getting a calm mind on his first sleep talk, which isn't the isn't the worst, I guess. Just I mean he could have gotten I mean I don't know what his other damage move is. Let's see. So he has he has calm mind, um, dazzling gleam, he has rest and sleep talk. Okay, so he all, all he really has to hit me is dazzling gleam. But uh, I'm still kind of worried after all these all these calm minds. So he's just gonna stay in, he sleep talks again, gets another calm mind. And I'm like, holy shit, this, this thing's fucking mind is so calm right now. Like, it could, I don't even, it, dangerous, bro, dangerous. But I go for an Iron Head, it does not do half, and I was like, oh god, Optimus, we gotta start making something happen. There, I actually attacked twice in a row, which tells me we did have a speed tie, which was very interesting, because uh, I actually didn't even know that we were gonna have a speed tie there, but I won that first one. As uh, you see there, his uh, Dazzling Gleam actually does less than uh, less than half, so I was like, fuck yeah, we're still in a pretty good spot here. As long as he starts getting, um, doesn't like, get all these Sleep Talk fucking Dazzling Gleams, I should be able to take this thing out. So I go for another Iron Head, that one actually gets a critical hit and does over half, and I was like, hell yes, I win the next speed tie, and one more Iron Head knocks this thing down to like 1 HP, and I was like, oh god, oh god. This shit is fucking ridiculous. So he goes for the Sleep Talk again. Even if he does get a Dazzling Gleam, I believe I will still live it. But he turns out to get a Calm Mind, which is perfect for me. This fucking Audinos, man. These things are so difficult to take care of. It's just, it's just awful. But he actually wins the speed tie on this next one. He is still fast asleep. He goes for the Sleep Talk, and he is going to get, uh, I think he just gets another Calm Mind. No, he gets rest. Okay, so... Either way, though, one more Iron Head is going to be able to take out Mega Audino. So, a nice little battle of Megas right there. Mega Aggron 
came out on top because I'm way more badass looking. So that's pretty much how I win. And uh, <laughs> he's now going to switch back into his Kyrim. I know that I don't really have a safe switch. He could predict me to go back into Zapdos um, during the Earth Power. But he just goes straight for the Earth Power. I let Agron stay in here and die. Uh, which really isn't the end of the world because I do still... Uh, this will allow me to get a revenge switch in. Which is kind of what I need at this point. Although I really wish that I did still have Mega Agron around for that... Uh, that fucking Slurpuff that I know he has in the back of his team. But, I have a plan. I decide to go into Unburdened Hitmonlee here. I go for the Fake Out. It's going to activate my Normal Gem and my Unburdened Ability, which is going to increase my speed, which is really nice because now at this point, I have all my max speed. I can go for a close combat. I know that that's going to be able to take out Kyrim. And his last Pokemon is the Slurpuff. So... This is where the plays could get interesting. He could go into the Slurpuff, he could just attack me with a Play Rough straight off, or he could uh, go for the Belly Drum and try to outspeed me. Although, I don't think he... So he... Okay, so he does go into the Slurpuff. All I can do is go for the Close Combat for the most possible damage. It does less than half, and I was like, oh god, what's this thing gonna do? So it turns out the fucking Cupcake goes for the Belly Drum. He is going to get knocked down to Red HP, then he pops his Citrus Berry, which is gonna activate his own Unburden ability. But, unluckily for him, Hitmonlee actually turns out to have higher speed than Slurpuff, and uh, we both, we're both we both just unburdened as fuck out here. But, unburdened Hitmonlee is able to come out on top. One more close combat is going to finish off the Cupcake. And, uh, yeah, that was a really good match. Honestly, I had a lot of fun there. Messing around with some uh, some interesting Pokemon and underuses is, is always a good time. But, uh, anyways, guys, if you liked the video, hit that like button, leave a comment, all that fun stuff, and I will see you later. Peace out.